Welcome back, friends. Arla here with more Reddit relationship stories for you. So he's 51 and his wife is 48. He says, My wife and I have been married for 28 years. Our marriage has been relatively good for most of that time, or at least I thought it was. We have five kids, aged 15 to 26. She was a stay-at-home mom for about 23 years, but the last five years, she's gone back to work. About eight years ago, my wife left our religion. I tried to support her the best I could while staying faithful myself, but she began to resent that I didn't leave with her. She claimed I wouldn't listen to her arguments because she was a woman, and that wasn't true, but I did and do feel strongly about staying in the faith. She also had complaints about me not helping enough with the kids and chores, etc., which I must agree, that is true. I definitely could have done more there. I struggle with deep negative thoughts and have been on medication for the past 15 years. Still, I had a lot of, quote, low energy, according to my wife, and she would complain that it was bringing her down. Beyond those complaints, I felt we were much like a lot of the other couples with some minor problems, but still in a loving relationship. Apparently, the minor problems we had were more of an issue for her. She began going to a therapist, a 50-year-old guy, about six years ago, and a little later, I began seeing him too, but individually. Several of our kids also saw him, and he was really good for them. I didn't go to see him very regularly, but I thought he was a nice guy, and he and a psychiatrist on staff would adjust my medications, which made me feel I was doing better. Recently, my wife began acting really strangely. It started with some late night phone calls that she would take in our home office. I assumed she was talking with her sister or mother, as she often would, just not that late at night normally. One day, she sat me down and told me that she thought our marriage was in trouble, but didn't want to get a divorce. Yeah, they never do. Gotta keep that gravy train running. This shocked me, but I assured her I wanted her to be happy and that we would work on things and start some couples counseling. I thought I had some time to improve my own behavior and start the counseling. Then she started staying out late at night, telling me she was visiting a friend who was having problems, and I wasn't worried about this at first, but it happened several nights in a row, and she wouldn't come home until midnight or later, uh-oh. This raised some red flags because she worked early in the morning, and she strongly guarded her sleep time, but she assured me that she was just visiting her friend. We had a family tracking app on our phones that we mainly used to check our children, but we could track each other too. Then one night, when she still wasn't home, I decided to see where she was. I didn't know where her friend lived, and the location that showed up was a residential area, so I assumed it was her friend's house, and my wife came home shortly after that. She pretended she had been at her friend's, and she didn't go out for a few nights, but then did again and was still out until around 2am. I woke up and found out that she wasn't home, so curiously, I checked the app, and she was at that same location. I started to have suspicions at this point, and I decided to Google the address. My first Google result was the professional website of the therapist. <laughs> oh no. He had a home office. I didn't want to believe it, and wanted to find reasons that she would be seeing him so late. Yeah, we all know what the reasons were. But not being able to think of any, I saw that his phone number was listed on the website. I logged into our phone carrier's site, and started looking at my wife's call and text logs, and the same number was coming up hundreds of times. In fact, it was over 1,300 times in the past six weeks. Good lord. I noted that the times of most of the calls and texts were late at night, but many were also during the day. Then I went back to bed and pretended I was asleep, and then when she finally came home, it was just long enough for her to change into her work clothes and then leave for work. The next morning, I woke up hoping that I had dreamt the investigation that I did, but some googling later confirmed what I found. I started documenting everything. By this time, I hadn't seen the therapist in over a year. A few days later, I asked her if she had seen the therapist lately, and she replied no, not in a couple of months. I then asked if she was sure she hadn't seen him, and she huffily replied no. <laughs> but I then told her I knew she was lying. I told her I had tracked her at his house, and she tried to deny it still, and said that the therapist had moved and that wasn't his house anymore. <laughs> okay, so she just happened to be hanging out at the house where he used to live, but now somebody else is there and she's just with that person? Come on. This was partially true. He was in the process of moving out of state. I said that it was too much of a coincidence that she was visiting an address that just happened to be the therapist's former house, yeah, no kidding, and then presented all the evidence I had collected. She broke down and admitted to it. Her first reaction was to ask me not to get the therapist in trouble. Yeah, that's a pretty big violation of ethics and probably could lose his license, I imagine, or he should. I replied I didn't want to get anyone in trouble, but I had to think about the situation since what the therapist had done was so wrong on so many levels. No kidding. She also maintained that she didn't want to legally divorce because she didn't want to have to move. Okay. She only doesn't want to get a divorce because she doesn't want to have to move. What is this? And our daughter was still in high school, etc. 
She did, however, say that she felt like our relationship was over and wanted to have an open marriage. <laughs> of course she did. I told her I needed time to think about things. She said her relationship with the therapist was ending anyway, since he was moving. Okay. So now that he's gone, you just want to have your husband stick around and be miserable with you instead of letting him go and find somebody else? What is this? This chick is ridiculous. She did, however, continue to go see the therapist and help him finish packing up and rub it in your face? This woman. After he moved, they continued to phone and text all the time. I was still in shock and decided to go see another counselor at the same provider. Did he also hook up with your wife? Long story short, I ended up informing them about the affair. The therapist had still been working for the same employer after he moved, just doing counseling sessions remotely, but he was now fired. From what I've learned, he thought he wouldn't be able to work as a therapist anymore, but apparently after six months, he's found employment again with a counseling outfit in his new state. Wait, he's still allowed to do this? That's ridiculous. My wife and I decided to legally divorce. Good. We're still sharing a house together until our youngest graduates high school in a couple years. We're friendly with each other, and that's about it. How is it possible that this person can continue working as a therapist? I mean, this is a clear, massive ethics violation. He has no morals. He was hired to help you fix your mental problems and your marriage. And not only did he not do that, but he completely destroyed it. I mean, imagine you have a family therapist. He knows the secrets of every person in the house, including you. You think that he's helping you out. Meanwhile, he's using that information against you. First, he mind f***s your wife, then really f***s your wife. I mean, obviously, there's a power imbalance here. And this reminds me of the episode of Seinfeld when Elaine's dating her therapist and she tries to break up with him, but he uses like mind techniques to convince her she can't or whatever. It's like clearly when there's a guy who's supposed to be supporting your mental health and he's dating you or sleeping with you there's got to be some sort of manipulation going on there but that's all i got to say about this one what do you all think of this let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments and click like for the algorithm and let's get into the next one so he's 35 and she's 37 he says this all just came out over the weekend and i've really been a wreck i'm not sure how to handle the information i just discovered about my wife she was 24 when we met i was 22 we were both in school and she was in a relationship with her boyfriend at the time They'd been together for five years. We became friends through school and had to work on a few assignments together, but initially everything was just platonic. I remember asking her about her boyfriend, and she explained to me that they'd been together since she was 19, so together for five years. But she felt like the relationship by that point was over in her mind. They weren't intimate much, and he was somewhat emotionally abusive. Yeah, of course, they always say this. He dictated all of her outfits, told her she was too fat. She wasn't and always showed her other women and how he'd rather be with them. Yeah, well, maybe she was, and he just... <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, he even cheated on her a few times and was openly dating other women near the end of their relationship. Yeah, well, then why'd she stick it out with him? She called me one day as a friend to complain about what was going on. She told me that he had told her he wanted to explore other women and felt like they should break up. I thought he was already doing that without her permission. What? This isn't making a lot of sense. She was pretty upset, even though he was treating her terribly she was upset so he was already seeing all these other women and now he's telling her he wants permission to see other women even though he already was she he treated her like complete garbage she thought the relationship was over yet now she's upset that he doesn't want to be with her anymore that he wants to see other women which he was already doing nothing you've said here about what this woman was telling you makes any sense but he continues i took her out for lunch and basically just listened to her and supported her as a friend that's exactly what she wanted to do manipulate you so that she could cheat on her boyfriend or whatever i guarantee it the next week, she called me again, this time to let me know that he had dumped her and he was moving out of the house they shared. I was a young dude at the time and thought, hey, perfect, I'll be a rebound and try to get with her. Crappy on my part, but as a 22-year-old guy, I didn't care. My friend. When a girl has a terrible boyfriend, even though he probably wasn't really that terrible to her, but once they're officially over and you feel like you want to move in to try to get with her, that doesn't make you a bad guy. And you thinking that it does right here shows me how naive you are. It's not as if you were trying to steal her from him. They were already done. And for you to try to be with her after the fact is like, come on, my friend, you're being too nice of a guy here. But anyway, he says, I took her out for dinner and we started having regular dates. They still lived together, and our conversations were heavily centered around her breaking up in the drama that it entailed. Okay. You were dating her while she was living with the guy? I would have thought she wasn't really officially done with the guy if she's living with him, but whatever. I'd pick her up from their house, and we'd go hang out. This went on for a few weeks, and we ended up sleeping together one night when I brought her back to my place. After that, I really started to develop feelings. Knowing I really liked her, I asked her to be my girlfriend while she lives with another guy. <laughs> Anyway, 
She was still living with her ex, as he hadn't moved out yet. So now I was dating a girl exclusively that still lived with her ex-boyfriend, and was most likely sleeping with her ex-boyfriend while living with him. <laughs> you couldn't have figured that out? I guarantee that's where this is going. I trusted her that nothing was going on, and the relationship was dead. Guaranteed it wasn't. She seemed to really hate him. Yeah, of course she's gonna seem like that to you. For timeline purposes, I'll reiterate that they broke up, and one month later I asked her to be my exclusive girlfriend. Yeah, and I guarantee they didn't actually break up, that's just according to your timeline. We continued being all about each other, except for when she was being about him, when you weren't around and she was at the house with him where they lived together. I was there to support her as she kicked him out. He ended up moving out a few weeks later and he finally found his own place. At this point, it was nice to know he was fully moved out, and so we started to be like a real relationship without any other drama involving her ex. A week later, which is about a month of us being exclusive, yeah in your head, I had planned a date night for us. We were supposed to meet at 7pm at a restaurant in town. I texted her an hour before and didn't hear back. I tried calling, no answer. I ended up driving over to her place and she wasn't home. I started to worry at this point, but there wasn't anything I could do. She ended up calling me at 11pm that night, apologizing profusely because she had been at a friend's house studying for finals and had left her phone in the car. Yeah, I bet. This cat blew you off so she could spend more time with her ex-boyfriend. She said she totally forgot about the date and felt terrible. I told her it was okay and didn't think much about it. I trusted her and everything went on as normal. Then a week later, her ex-boyfriend started harassing her, calling her non-stop. She said that she told him to leave her alone and that he wanted her back, but she didn't want to be with him. It actually got to a point that he'd sit outside of her house for hours at a time. I was over there one day and she called the police when he showed up. She ended up filing a restraining order against him and never heard from him again. Then about a year later, we had some drinks and she let it slip that she was actually over at his house the night she claimed to be studying and left her phone. <laughs> yeah, who didn't see that coming? She apologized profusely and told me that his mom was in town and she was trying to help him get her back. Get her back? Why would he need to get his mom back? What's going on? She agreed to dinner with both of them to talk about their relationship. She was very close to his mom and agreed to meet them out for dinner and talk. This is getting really weird. She said that after dinner, she went back to his new place with his mom and the three of them continued talking. Why did I just have a really dirty thought in my head? She said it got late and she stayed the night instead of driving home. I was obviously upset about the whole thing, but she said that she had explained to him that she no longer wanted to be in a relationship with him and had to move on. She said nothing happened. Yeah, well, we already know we can't trust this person, so that means nothing. Several times over the next several years, I pressed her about that night. I felt very insecure about it. Every time I asked her if she cheated on me, she said she didn't. She said that she just went over there to talk and fell asleep after she called me. She said that she felt terrible about lying, but was feeling bad about everything and it was so fresh out of her breakup that she didn't know how to handle it. But she stayed firm on her claim that she had never cheated on me, even though we ended up getting married and having three kids. Why? This past weekend, I pressed her one last time about, bro, you have kids now, it's all this time later, you're still bringing this up? Why did you even continue with this? And I love how at the beginning of this whole story he says, this revelation just came out this last week and I can't believe it. It's like, bro, you've been talking about this and worrying about this for how long now? Like, over a decade? Anyway, I told her something wasn't sitting right with me after all these years. It randomly popped into my head and I asked her one more time, what really happened that night? I'm not sure if I believe you because it really just doesn't make sense. Yeah, nothing about this makes sense. And then also, side note, I've said this many times on this channel that this is why when someone cheats or when someone betrays you in some way, granted she didn't fully admit it, but it was pretty obvious, you can never forgive them and try to move forward because exactly what this guy's describing is what happens to most people. They keep replaying things in their head over and over and over for years, can never get over it, and can never have a truly strong relationship because they just can't stop thinking about the time they were betrayed. But anyway, he continues. She broke down crying and I knew it. She explained to me that she never wanted to tell me the truth. Yeah, they never do. She said that she did go over to his house with him and his mom, but his mom ended up leaving and they sat and talked about their relationship for a bit. She said that one thing led to another and they ended up having you know what on the sofa. She even gave you the details of where it went down. She said that she was confused about her feelings being two months out of her five year relationship with him and dating me. Yeah, um, for one, this is why you never date someone who just got out of a long-term relationship like this because more often than not, especially when they're this young, she's been with the guy since she was in high school, they, they still cannot get over these feelings. And you can't believe them when they say, oh, he was doing this and that, he was a terrible boyfriend, he cheated, he treats me like garbage. 
If it doesn't sound like it makes sense, which I clearly pointed out as soon as he was explaining this in the beginning, then obviously it doesn't make sense. When she's saying that she can't stand the guy, but she continues living with him, continues spending time with him. She says he's so terrible, but she's been with him all this time and continues to be with him. Obviously, there's something about him that has her attached, which means you need to not get attached to her because most likely what's happened with this is what's going to happen. But he continues. She said that she hadn't processed the ending of that relationship and was confused about what she wanted. And she, even though he was treating her like garbage, come on, as he had dumped her, but then was begging for her back. She told me that they had, you know what, then she called me as I was calling her nonstop, worried about her, and she ended up staying the night there and went home in the morning. Bro, you're sitting here worrying about her. Meanwhile, she's getting freaking her guts pounded in by her ex. Despicable. After that, she told him that she didn't want to get back with him and they needed to stay apart. I know it all stopped then because very clearly she was avoiding him and went as far as getting the restraining order against him in the following weeks. Yeah, that was probably all a bunch of nonsense too. She probably got a phony restraining order or like really got the restraining order, but it wasn't necessary. She probably was just trying to make this guy look like some kind of creep when she was very willing to go to his house and sleep with him to a point where she's even lying to you. This is just nonsense. Anyway, but now here I sit feeling shattered. She confessed a lie to me for the past 13 years and had been gaslighting me the whole time. Yeah, she's garbage. Every time I asked her about that night, she'd always deny anything inappropriate happening. I started to feel crazy and insecure. Well, that's what gaslighting does to a guy. And had accepted that I was just losing my mind. But now I know that she did cheat that night. I suppose I can make excuses for her, telling myself that I began dating a girl who had just been dumped by a guy she was with for five years, accepting that I was a rebound and she was even still living with him in the beginning. Yeah, makes no sense at all. This guy doesn't want her and she tries to pretend she doesn't want him, but the reality is the more he wants to be with other girls, the more it probably made her want him to a point where she's even willing to sleep with him behind your back. He's the bad boy, you're the nice guy, and per usual, the nice guy finishes the last. And no offense, but you really finished last when now you're stuck with this chick for life having three kids with her. Anyway, I believed her that she hasn't been cheating any other time, and there has just been an overlap in her relationship with him and myself. Yeah, well, that's probably a mistake too. That being said, I'm still severely hurt by the lie, and I'm very confused about how to feel about it. We've been together for 13 years, and we have three kids, and we've had otherwise a really great relationship. This new information is all just so much to take. I'm even considering divorce here. After 13 years, finding out that she cheated on me during our first month of being exclusive and then lied to me about it this whole time, I'm just a wreck. And I know I need to process this before I take any action, but I wanted to share this to get an outside perspective and clarity. She's been apologizing profusely and had reassured me that over and over, she feels terrible and that she only lied because she knew it would never happen again, and she wanted to be completely done with that relationship after that night, and was just confused in the beginning transitioning from a five-year relationship with him to a new one with me. She understands why I'm devastated. She also keeps reminding me that she was young, hurt, confused, and didn't know what she wanted until after that night when she realized that she wanted to be completely done with him. Yeah, or he wanted to be completely done with her after that, and she got the restraining order to make it look like it was the other way around. But that's pure speculation. I'm certain she hasn't stepped out on our relationship any other time. Well, how can you be sure of that? If I were to ever question anything, it would have been that night she disappeared and I didn't know where she was. After that, I always knew where she was, who she was with, and I've never had any reason to suspect anything was wrong. So do I need to slow down here and work on forgiving her? Or does this sound like divorce worthy? I love her with everything I have, and we've built a family and life together, but this is the hardest thing I've ever had to learn. Okay, my friend, this is probably going to have people hating on me in the comments when I say this, but here it is. For one, the like I've already said, the way you started out this relationship was absolutely ridiculous. This is no way to start a relationship with someone when they're living with someone else, because you have to imagine that she was sleeping with the guy the entire time that you were with her in the beginning when she was living with him. It wasn't just that one night. It was probably many times. Sorry to tell you this, but that's true. Two, as I've already said, many of the things she told you about her relationship with him or the dynamics of the relationship before and after you met are probably complete lies. Probably everything you thought you knew about her relationship with him and many other things are complete lies. Everything you heard from her, you can just throw it right out the window because it's all coming from her perspective in an attempt to manipulate you into not knowing how she really felt about this guy or what was really going on. But three, that being said, although you were pretty dopey for not thinking that she'd be sleeping with this guy, especially when she was living with him. But given that you chose to get in the relationship, 
while she was living with the guy, you pretty much were asking for this to happen. And given that it was in the beginning of your relationship with her 13 years ago, it was like in the first month of you guys being together. Granted, she did cheat and that's a terrible thing. But at this point, to divorce her when you have three kids, it's been 13 years. As far as you know, she's never done anything else with anybody else. And there's a good chance that she probably has only slept with like you, him, and maybe one other person, if that. So yes, she did cheat, but it's not always a once a cheater, always a cheater situation. If she cheated on you with a guy who she'd been living with when you were dating her, she was with the guy for five years, then there's a good chance that she had some feelings left over. I would assume that he was the one that ditched her. I don't even believe that she's the one that told him to get out. I think he told her he was done with her and that's where it really ended. But regardless of whether that's the case or not, if this was like one year into the relationship, given that she probably would still have these lingering feelings, I would tell you to get rid of her. But now that it's been 13 years and this was based on a situation where she had been with that guy long term and all that, it's not like she's necessarily a serial cheater or I mean, sure, her morals are probably, you know, questionable, but she was in her early 20s at the time. Now she's in her late 30s, almost 40, has three kids. Like, in my opinion, I don't think you have much to worry about as far as her cheating again. And that would be the main concern with people like this. So I would say, sure, she made a mistake. Yeah, it sucks that she did this to you, but you kind of asked for it given the circumstances of the relationship at that time. And at this point, you know, people do change. Just because she cheated on you with her ex-boyfriend in the first month that you knew her doesn't mean that a decade and a half later when you're a family and all this, like you don't need to break up the family over something like this. And I know typically this isn't something I would say. I almost always said that you should divorce if they cheat and this and that. But the very first month with her ex-boyfriend who she was living with right before that and even while you were dating her and I mean, that was your fault for getting involved in that in the first place. But now that you've been together this long and there's three kids, in my opinion, it would be stupid to leave at this point. I mean, if she does something again, then leave. But if you have no reason to believe she's done anything but this one thing, then I would go see a therapist and let it go. But click on one of these videos if you want to support the channel or one of the recommended ones down below. And follow me on my other channel and other platforms at Ireland Official. Till later, hope you all take care of yourselves. Support and be good to good women. Peace.